I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Technical difficulties, episode two. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. So what, I mean... what's up with the monitor? <laughs> so I was adjusting my screen. Yeah. And as I was adjusting the screen, I bumped it. Oh, okay. Which hard caused, bump? Well, I bumped the, the power, right? So the power yeah. flipped. Uh-huh. I thought. I think my monitor might have blown out, and it tripped the switch <laughs> for... Uh, it, it tripped the, the surge protector. Oh, okay. On, so, uh, on my end... I, I, you bent over to adjust something, and then it says Skype is reconnecting because of bad connection. And then yeah. there's a I got a text message that read, um, "I'm a dumbass." Yep, my monitor is. is down. And then after a couple minutes, we reconnect, and uh, your room looked pitch black. That just turned out to be your your a cover or something over your yeah. your yeah. camera. Oh man. So I I gotta buy a new twenty inch monitor. <laughs> it happens. Uh, it happens. You guys um, are gonna hear live me looking for a monitor for a second. Oh, all right. I'll guess your Amazon uh, password based off your cl- clickety clicks. Yeah, I already lo- I'm already logged into Amazon. So, uh, did you on a bright side, I guess, kind of maybe, see episode two of the Promised Neverland? I did. It was really freaking good. It was good. That's such a good show. It's such a good show. If you haven't heard of it, definitely watch it. Uh, yeah, man, check it out. It's on Crunchyroll, and uh, there's literally no way to describe it without spoiling things. It's, yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> it's just yeah. like the plot is a spoiler. Yeah, it, basically it's a walking spoiler. Until you actually watch an episode... Um, you're going to be spoiled by the plot. Yeah. Like <laughs> any, any attempt to describe it will spoil the show for you. So, and because the giveaway the the, the reveal is so freaking amazing, I feel like it should be a crime to spoil that show. It sh- it's so good. Like it's so good. Legitimately a crime. So yeah. Um, I actually, so here's the thing. Yeah. I read the manga because I'm a sinner. I read all of it. I'm only That's... two episodes in in the show. Does the manga is it does it follow the show so far um, um, to a point, or is it sort of like Game of Thrones where they're like ex- almost exclusive to each other? They're two totally different things. So it's not they're not two totally different things. First, of okay. All. Um, that's that's important. Uh-huh. The the show. <laughs> is amazing yeah um i the the animation for the show i was originally not on board with it but it really grew on me really quick um but (laughs) you how'd you describe it you said that there's a lot of facial real estate yeah (laughs) phil has a lot of face he he has a lot of face to fill and not enough parts to fill it so that that's that's all i'm going to say yeah um but the the manga is very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the man, I said the manga is very good so many times. I, I think that that should be an indication for how good the the show is. But um, basically, the long and short of it is they cut out a lot of uh, like interstitial bits, so to speak. Okay, that's 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 basically yeah. what I'm going to say. Um, it's not bad. You can you still have a pretty decent idea of what's going on in the story, uh, but it's it's you know they they do cut stuff out. Okay, I um, will say that that 
from watching the show and not having read the manga and based off what you just said, it's a really good show. And whatever they're cutting out, it seems like the story is broad strokes. You're getting just like, bam, here's the main storyline. And that's really what you're being fed. So far, only two episodes in, there's no B story. Mm. And I'm fine with that so far. Yeah. It's it's no, totally got my attention. It, it's 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 a legitimate uh story. Um Yeah. It's a, even like even talking about anything about the story whatsoever though is such a colossal spoiler. Oh uh, yeah. Well that's the because there is only so far the main storyline. There's yeah. no way to not spoil it. There's no no there's literally nothing we can talk about that'll make it not not a spoiler. Pretty um, much. It, it's good. It's on Crunchyroll. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. Uh you also it's available the manga is available on the um uh Shonen Jump app, which I just found out existed. Oh, okay. Um so I've been just uh, basically it's 2 bucks a month, which this this sounds like an ad read, but we're not getting paid for it. Uh <laughs> Um, so it's two bucks a month and you can read like anything that gets printed in Shonen Jump. So nice. Right on. Yeah. So I bought a new monitor because <laughs> I don't feel like lugging a 27 inch monitor upstairs every time I want to, uh, yeah. record. So, oh, now you know that I record, I, I lug a monitor upstairs every time I record. So have, <laughs> have fun with that. I knew you had to drag a, 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 a you know, all the stuff around. I didn't know you were dragging a, a monitor around. Yeah, I, well, if I can figure out what happened to my other monitor, maybe I won't have to drag a monitor around anymore, but we'll see. Okay, right on. <sighs> I'm not happy about it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted too much time on that, and now what am I going to do to watch YouTube videos on my side window while I'm playing dumb video games? <laughs> That's yeah, actually I mean... the thing I'm most upset about. You can't play video games and have YouTube at the same time. Yeah, I will That's say actually... more monitors, more better. That's what's up, man. I've got a, I've got a three monitor setup. I've got a forty-two inch, and I've got two. I don't know what they are. I'll say uh, eight, eighteen to twenty-two somewhere in there. I don't know. I'm not breaking out a tape measure. It's a good setup, though. I will say this, Brandon. Yeah. Um What was that? A forty-two inch? Yes. That's not a monitor. That's TV. At that point. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It makes reading, it makes reading the the write up so much easier. So I've got the write up on the big forty two inch in the middle, on the left one up into the side. I've got the uh, our, our the recording software, the DAW, and then up on the right side, I've got the Skype window, and it works out so well. It's so nice. Now that yeah. now that we've, uh, I I've said the same thing about a show because I can't say anything about the plot. And uh, I've destroyed a monitor. I guess we should probably start the show. Sure, yeah. So I'll say welcome to Cryptozoological Fantasies, the cryptid podcast where overqualified people talk uh, talk about cool shit and one cusses a lot. Not a long, funny spoof intro this time, uh, really because I just wanted to do an archaeological fantasy spoof, just because I like them. Good podcast. Yeah, fair enough. If you like archaeology, really cool, like, like really interesting stuff. And one of them's like a, he's like a wild card, but a wild card, uh, in like a smart guy way. Oh, it's good stuff. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And which one of us would be the wild card? Uh, I don't know. That's don't actually know. a really, that's a difficult question. Uh, yeah. cause I don't honestly know who the wild card is. Uh, I think we're both the three of clubs. The three of clubs. Yeah. Mostly cause I like Penn and Teller. All right, because okay, you said that you said all. <sighs> every Penn and Teller fan out there knows that every time they do a card trick, they reveal or the person who is supposed to pick a card at random always chooses the three of clubs. I didn't know that. It's always the three of clubs. I did not know that. It's a th- it's a thing. I I'll I believe you. It's a thing. It's a I thing. I know that, but it's a thing. It, I'll believe it's a thing. Yeah, yeah, I want to be the mask magician. Yeah, from Sailor Moon. No, no, that's Tuxedo Mask. Oh, you're talking about from the oh, it's on Netflix. The, what's yeah. that title of the show? Oh, I call I him mean, Magic Luchador. He's the bad boy of of magic, really. Let's Is be he? honest. Yeah, well, because he's revealing all them tricks. 
okay. and making the Statue of Liberty disappear. Okay, you can be him, and I'll be uh, I'll be Carbonaro. Okay, you're gonna yeah. be you're gonna show off an effect. Yeah. Too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Our creature this week. Okay. Is from North America. I think it might be my first North American creature so far. The closest thing uh... would be the the Pombero, but that's South America. Yeah, I think this is your first yeah. North American cryptid. Yeah, yeah. You, so you're Franken... stepping in on my turf, boy. Oh, man. Yeah. You're stepping in on my turf. Yeah, it, we're going to have swear. a real sharks. I'm going to walk at you snapping my fingers. I swear if you end up in if you end up in West Virginia, I'm going to have to to file a uh uh some kind of suit against you because you're 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 infringing on my IP. Nope, I'm on the other half of the country, man, this time. West half. West half. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It is humanoid in appearance. Mm -hmm. It first showed up uh it's its first appearance is relatively ambiguous. Mm -hmm. But for the sake of argument, I'll place it between 1400 and 1868 CE. Uh, it is, okay. It is animal-like in appearance, mm -hmm. generally four-legged animals, and is still seen today. Any guesses on what it could be? Humanoid and four-legged? Yeah. No, you heard so, me, right? There's two things that I'm thinking of. Okay. Um... One of them was the star of a very good PlayStation video game, and that's oh that that might be spoilers. Are you talking about Oddworld Stranger's Wrath? Because I played that on Xbox. No, I'm talking oh. about Until Dawn. But now that I say that, okay. So if you haven't heard Until Dawn, if you haven't played Until Dawn, I guess stop the podcast, play it, and then you can start the podcast again. All right, let me go uh, go download that off the PlayStation Store real quick. Okay, well, the spoiler is it's Wendigos. Okay. Um, the second but more reasonable answer, based on your description, could it be a Skinwalkers? It's Skinwalkers! Yeah, I had the feeling. Oh, man. So, I should also note that... Yeah? Isn't there, like, a whole huge thing about don't talk about Skinwalkers? Yeah, like, that's a thing. That's like, that's... don't talk about... Well, it's don't talk about them... When it's nighttime, because then they'll be like, oh, I'm a walking on your skin. Um, We're recording this at 545. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty dark outside, but they're uh, other other half of the country. Plus, uh, I can't. It's black outside, but it may or may not be snowing. Supposedly, there's a blizzard. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, possibly that's a possible problem. So, yeah, I, mean... Actually, I did the other day when it snowed, there was. There were bunny feet hopping up my driveway. I saw their tracks dead center. And then here's the deal. They boop, turned left. They stayed on the driveway, then on the sidewalk. If you're a normal animal, why not just go on the grass? Why stick to the driveway and the sidewalk? I might have a real skinwalker out there. The smallest skinwalker. The most adorable skinwalker ever. The easiest to fight. It should have chosen the skunk that hangs out in my backyard because I would not fight the skunk. That's fair. I also had a rabbit in front of my house just recently. Like, Did you? what was it? Uh, Friday we had the first snow, so yeah. I was I went outside because I thought I was gonna have to. Um, I was I thought I was gonna have to. Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Shovel a little bit. Yeah. Didn't have to because it just melted away. But oh, uh, nice. I noticed nice, the nice. the rabbit tracks. So. You gotta let me know how your automatic shovel works out because I'm. Uh... I'm very I'm pretty, excited to try. Pretty it. excited. I've heard about them. I've never used them. And oh, if oh, yours oh. works, I'm a hundred percent running out and getting one. I am very excited to try it. Very excited. I can't wait. It's <laughs> you had crazy guy eyeballs when you said I can't wait. I can't wait Holy to try crap. it. I don't okay. think you understand how much I hate shoveling. It's nobody likes it. I got for Christmas heated gloves and a beanie with headlights on it, so I could sh night shovel. Because my elite strat for shoveling, since I hate moving heavy snow, mm -hmm. is when it does snow, I'll go out every hour to 90 minutes so I can move, like, smaller layers. I'm just in yeah. and out a whole lot, but it's less physical effort, I feel. Um, yeah, that, that's about it. Did you get the copy? Yes. Yes? All right, right on. I, that, was, that was me nodding my head while I was thinking about what the name of a rabbit is. Oh, bugs. Yeah. Well, no, I... See, here's the problem... 
I'm good at coming up with stuff to talk about, but I'm still yeah. very bad at talking. <laughs> Which talk be hard, man. Yeah. So talk be hard. This is probably the worst possible thing to do if you're bad at talking. Or maybe it's yeah. the best. I'm not sure. Maybe. Because hypothetically, you're trying to get better at talking, so you talk more. But then yeah. again... <laughs> We're Anywho. really just screaming into the internet at this point. But anyway, the reason I was sort of ambiguous with the date is because the Skinwalker is a shapeshifter originating from Navajo uh, tradition. Mm-hmm. And from what I could find... They originally began populating the southwest uh, of the the northern United States um, in 1400, and the Navajo Nation uh, became federally recognized in 1868. However, so, yeah, uh, 1868. Yeah, I mean, here's the fact of the matter: anything involving Native Americans in America, right, happened uh, before then. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, it happened way before. Yeah. We acknowledged it, like, way before. Yeah. However, their ancestors, the Anasazi, were in the area around 400 AD, um, and evidence of Paleo-Indians in North America dates even farther back than that. So that's why it's super ambiguous, because it's a really it, ambiguous, there's no hard, like, here's sort of the first time it came up that I was able to find. And the fact of the matter is, it's more likely than not um it's one of those it's probably an oral tradition that's mutated over the years so yeah no exactly that that's part of why it was hard tracking it down so i sort of gave a relative when when anthropologists think that the original navajo sort of were in the area and when they were originally recognized so that's when i i dated that in reality it's an oral tradition that who knows how far back it, it it went yeah, pretty much anything before the printing press is difficult to pin down. Yeah, oh yeah. Just as a rule. <laughs> <laughs> so skinwalkers, or Yi Naldushi, uh, in Navajo language of Diné, translates to, by means of it, it goes on all fours. Which, okay. I like the, transla- the translation to sound super cool. By means of it, it goes on all fours. Like, yeah, I don't know. I just thought that that was a cool uh, translation. I approve. Um, yeah, of, yeah. I approve of your assessment. <laughs> I'm not cool myself, so that doesn't mean anything. So yeah, and only a cool person can truly define what is cool. Oh yes, and we are by all means a hundred percent cool. I mean, um, hey, yeah. do you have an abominus sitting on your desk right now? No. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, I have a chupacabra. That's pretty cool. And I'm not gonna guess. The number, but I've got two display cases filled with guitar picks. And all of them are different in very specific ways. <laughs> and it matters. And it matters, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'd like to point out, this will be a two-parter. Uh, because I, I went down a very deep rabbit hole and learned a lot of stuff I probably should have learned in history class. Um, and then I broke the second part into... I'm gonna I'm break them apart in, in, in traditional and modern, but that's not really the right way, and it's probably a semi, definitely the wrong way of separating it. But mentally, that's how how I broke them apart. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna have part one traditional skinwalkers, part two modern skinwalkers, and it's really um, I guess air quotes normal shit versus weird shit is how it's gonna be separated. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So here, let's enter shit I should have learned in history class. Mm -hmm. As a side note, this is me picking right back up on the copy. As a side note, I'd like to mention that the Diné is how they refer to themselves. It means the people. The term Navajo was given to them by Spanish missionaries, meaning cultivated fields, um, because they occupied the land which they were going to take from the Diné. The name itself is derived from the word uh, for type of knife. Okay. That's cool. It, wait. No, All opposite right. of cool. Opposite. Negative wait. cool. No, negative cool. no. The name. No, I was referring to the uh, the word for a type of knife. Yeah. I thought, oh, I yeah. thought Diné was the name of a type of knife. Because then I thought, 
oh, it's cool. It's a type no. of knife that stabs. No, the and knife... it's called the people. It's like it's like the the yeah. it's like a very uh, socialistic notion of yeah. you're using the people to take down tyrants. But no, 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 it's, no, a, it's, it's a Navajo. I They're like we're the people, we are the Dene. Navajo is like a, a mashing them up word that is sort of like you're we're gonna harvest the land you're on, so we're gonna call you by the name of the knife that we, you use to harvest. That's way worse. Fucked. Yo, yeah, no, that, no, yeah. No, I, I rescind my my previous statement was because of poor reading comprehension. That's wrong. Yeah. That's messed yeah. up. Oh yeah. Uh, apparently, in 1993, the Diné were uh, going to vote and see if they should change back to their own name, Diné from Navajo, um, and not the one given to them by outsiders. But opponents of it said it would be quote too confusing and quote cost taxpayers the expense of changing legal stationery. Uh, so the probable uh, slip-ups, I'm going to uh, refer to the uh, uh, Navajo as Diné from now on, with the exception of uh, direct quotes. So Again, I'm, I'm going to slip up. But yeah, yeah is I your comment a... that it's too expensive to change the logo on the stationery so they weren't allowed to keep it? Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> well, well uh, I want to say... Yeah. There's no way that a Nava, sorry, Dene said that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's we're all friends here, man. Everyone knows nothing but good, nothing but peace and love and good feelings. You know, it, it's say, say, say whatever, but lean one way, and if you go the other way, every once in a while, eh, you know. So that, but that was definitely not a Dene saying that. That was definitely, definitely a white dude saying that. <laughs> like a hundred percent. A hundred percent that was a white dude saying that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I didn't see, th- there's, I, I, in the, uh, you know, in the show notes, I linked to everything, so this article's available. I don't know that it said exactly who said it, but they said opponents of it, so I'm assuming, <laughs> white guy. <laughs> uh... Shortly after deciding to research the Skinwalker, I quickly found... Okay, so I already said this up front. I'm going to say it again because I wrote it down, damn it. So I have to Uh, read it. Really quick. I I did just look something up in the the gap where we were taking drinks of water. Yeah. Um, Most of the Nava... uh, Dene lands... Yeah. ...are in Arizona. Yeah. So it's probably John McCain. <laughs> it's possible. Ninety three. He was. Uh, he was kicking. He was kicking around. Yeah, and given all the things that, uh, given if you listen to the dollop episode about John McCain, because I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> One good call. Two. Just listen to any dollop episode in general. You're gonna start to hate white people. Yeah, or like, think that they are all from Florida. Because they do so many episodes, and every time you're like, sounds like it could be a modern Florida man. Yeah. 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 America uh, did a lot of bad things to people. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I already said this up top. Going to say it again because it's in the copy. And like Sheldon, that's my spot. Shortly after deciding to research the Skinwalker, I quickly found that there was a hard line between what I'm going to call traditional and modern Skinwalkers, um, even on their description. Uh, I did not see anyone else make this distinction, but there is an obvious and clear difference between stories, and I find that an easy way to separate them in my head is... uh, uh, I will start with what I'm going to call traditional Skinwalkers... And unfortunately, there's significantly less literature on this as the modern skinwalker, partly because it is an oral tradition. So I will gladly accept emails from anyone with more information. Additionally, I found that um, uh, what I found on the Diné was after some cursory research and from, uh, uh, from middle school, we were mostly taught general American Indian information and memorized kind of, sort of, where the different tribes were on a map. That, 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 you know, that's about the extent of it. It was more like, here's how they lived, here's uh, map-wise where they're at, and you just memorize that stuff. So I'm open to accepting more info and corrections to that regard, as well as suggestions 
for future episodes on Native American folklore because it turns out it's cool as shit. It actually is. Yeah. So. Oh, also, yeah. we're from New York, so almost everything was about the Revolutionary War. Yeah. Like, a disproportionate amount of what we learned about was the Revolutionary War. Yeah, I mean, they touched a bit, because, like, we're up by the Schwangunk, so, like, really stuff specific to that, and then as you move farther away, less and less information. Yeah. Yep. So, we're going to start part one on uh, traditional, in quotes, skinwalkers, which, not the right word for it, it's just how I separate it mentally. Um, This is what accounts at the time um, called, quote, Navajo witchcraft and um it is after watching several interviews with uh different people of the Diné, they call it navajo witchcraft themselves so that's anytime you hear that don't be like oh it's weird that's how they're referring to it themselves um at least in modern day interviews um that you hear in part two from what i could find it would appear that what i am referring to as Again, quotes, traditional skinwalkers, again, no one differentiated, um, so apologies if this term is incorrect, were medicine men with sort of uh, a bit of a taboo twist. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They would perform sim- uh, ceremonies similar to other Diné ceremonies involving dance, herbs, sand painting, and other ritual with some key differences. Okay. It would appear that these medicine men practiced uh, on the very ill the wounded or the dying and that on occasion ash may have been used instead of sand they would dress an animal skin in native american religion animals uh and or animal spirits have very distinct personalities and powers and as such the medicine man would come uh, become that animal in order to aid in the ceremony and use the special characteristics of that animal and the powers of that animal uh to help aid in the effects of spiritual healing and most likely you mean that in the metaphoric sense. Uh, like, yeah, cause, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, it's usually more or less like, I mean, I can understand that and recognize that from like a perspective, because if you think about like the patch Adams style of medicine, yeah. Where laughter is the best medicine. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes attitude does have an influence on how well you heal. Yeah. Not like, I'm not going to say that laughing cures cancer, Mm -hmm. but like if you've got a broken, if you've got a broken leg and you're laughing, at least you're not focused on the broken leg. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Yeah. And uh, as far as metaphors, um, I think again, like the, the, from what I found, there's not a lot of information because it's an oral tradition. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, from what I could find, the Dene tend to be a little bit tight lipped about this sort of thing. Um, I think, think it is a literal transformation similar to how right i grew up roman catholic so when, oh. you go get, when you go to get communion it's a literal transformation of bread into human meat mm-hmm. so i think it might be a similar thing where it's yes it is a literal transformation of human to animal animal if you're in that religion but to outsiders it's sort of like it's you know. it's still kind of metaphorical in the sense though, but yeah, it, it's kind of like in the same way that how the yeti is treated in like Nepal. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a metaphorical miasma of different creatures, mm-hmm. but it's treated as a literal creature, so it's kind of like it's it's the way that the human mind works. Yeah, we're yeah. able to have our cake and eat it. Yeah, a lot, a lot. It's a very yeah. common thing. <laughs> actually whoever yeah. came up with you can't have your cake and eat it too they're wrong they don't know human they don't know humans they are so wrong yeah yeah according to anthropologist clyde cluckin in his 1944 book navajo witchcraft <laughs> and in a 1974 utah state university grad study uh, a report called An Examination of Navajo Witchcraft and Its Influence on the Thoughts and Actions of the Navajo People by Terrell R. Palmer, who heavily cites Clyde. There are four distinct types of ritual used by witches. And as a disclaimer, Terrell wrote his report uh, for his master's in psychology as a way of understanding uh, Dene as he was a counselor for Dene students in a boarding school and not as an anthropology major. Uh, he also had a whole lot of typos 
Well, his name's Cluckin. No, no, so just, so, so, no, he was chicken. Ter- oh, he was, God damn it. He, yeah, he was just <laughs> he was just pecking at the keys, so he doesn't get all of them right, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Like, and... I mean, give the dude credit. He at least wrote a book with a beak. <laughs> Yeah. I can't it, write a book with two with ten hands. Ten fingers on my hands. <laughs> with ten hands on your fingers? That explains all the weird stuff you breaking your monitor. Terrell, by the way, gains one bonus point for um doing a whole study and trying to learn about the people who he's counseling. Minus one point for having so many typos in his master's uh uh, uh write up and not I left. I, inc- I left them all in. They're all included. Just scroll around and look for them. Red underlines because there's a typo. So I'm. Fact. Fun fact about John. Yeah. I have a master's thesis. Yeah. <laughs> I can almost guarantee that there's a ton of typos in that master's thesis. Uh, also, well, is it? So what do you mean by typo? Typo is, and it's not. So when you work in very specific fields. There are a lot of very cr- common words that are not recognized as words in word editors. Um, meaning, like, um, for me, I get autocorrected and have to fix it all the time when I type the word Venturi, which, you know, refers to the Venturi effect, because it's not a word recognized by any Microsoft, like, word editing software and, like, Outlook and all that. So your typos may well have been real words. Uh, well, or I, not. I'm just saying that there's probably several typos that exist in, holy crap, 601, 661 people have downloaded my master's thesis. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Feel free to put that in the sources. <laughs> no, we, I'm not putting that in the sources. You can find oh. it if you if you're if you're trying to find it, you'll yeah. find it. Oh wait, oh did man, I... yeah. Okay, we can we can move on. We don't have to talk about John's master thesis anymore. Can we? Because I'm reading. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so for the listener, if you don't want to do the footwork, I will say I'm going to fully read his master's thesis because. Um, I personally know at least two of these people, and page three has a screenshot of Han Solo. So, <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, so the funny story behind that Han Solo uh, picture, mm-hmm. it was originally added because yeah. one of my teammates, who you know, uh, uh-huh. he was mad at our advisors Yeah, because he didn't believe that they were actually paying attention to us. Okay. So he put basically the most basic of canaries in our our document. Yeah. And that was Han Solo saying we have no time to discuss this in a committee. <laughs> uh, which tell so here's the fact the fact of the matter. No one on our masters committee read our thesis. <laughs> but guess who has a master's degree <laughs> oh that's fantastic yep oh man so of the different uh, uh, types of ritual there will be type one witches quote the Navajo believe witches to be individual to possess a great deal of supernatural power. These people are evil and use their power for evil purposes. They are so powerful that they have no need to heed taboos that would be impossible for an ordinary man to break without disastrous results. That was they, a Yeah, 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 disastrous, spelled wrong. Mm-hmm. They may do such things as handle the dead freely, have incestuous relations with siblings, and mm-hmm. rob graves. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, all, all with no fear of harm uh, coming to them. Witchcraft has been described as the use of supernatural and socially unacceptable techniques to influence events. It can be practiced by other men or women, but it is in most cases practiced by men. Those who practice it can act separately or in groups to do such things as obtain material goods of others and cause illness or death of those they hate. It is not unusual for aberrant singers to practice witchcraft. 
a practicing medicine man or singer can um, practice witchcraft under the guise of doing good without even being found out. So I just want to... Yeah? Okay. So I have this feeling. And now... Yeah? I'm not I'm not deriding the Dene people. Yeah. This is me stating something that I've come to observe in human nature. Uh-huh. Somebody who is in a position of power said, I'm a witch. You can't do anything about it. That means nothing applies to me anymore. Screw I mean, the rules. I have power. That's just that's just politics, man. I mean that that's what that reads to is me. Although yeah. well that depends on whether whether or not being a witch makes you a social pariah or being a witch makes you so like i i i'm not sure if you mentioned this later on or the, yeah the thing mentions it if someone is a witch right yeah are they ostracized from Dene society that's a part two question okay all right <laughs> Okay, we'll get yeah. we'll get there then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say there there is an answer. Okay, um, and that answer comes uh, in part two. All right. Yep. In this case, he will appear to cure his patients through ceremonies or singing, but in reality, he is merely reversing uh, the witchcraft of his own doing. He will always try to hide his real nature while posing as a very kindly and pleasant person. While Navajo often speak of witches and witchcraft in general terms, which includes any of the several types of witchcraft, they also have very differently differently distinguished between these different types of witchcraft. So, I just want to point something out. Yeah. Um, What he's discussing there, the the notion of just reversing their own bad doing and yada, yada, yada. So there's an old computer science legend <laughs> back from the days yes. of usenet uh-huh. uh so the idea is you're a developer okay and frequently you have targets that you have to meet you have objectives blah, blah, uh-huh. blah, blah. there's a ethically questionable thing that people can do uh-huh and that's they insert sleeps in their code Okay. Those sleeps that they insert into their code purposely slow down the execution of code routines mm-hmm. uh, by oh, a fixed amount. Oh yeah. The old, the old, as the old legend goes, the old ones say, uh, people of the less scrupulous type, uh huh, when asked to fix a bug, they'll use they'll they'll use their magic. To yeah. un- to do something called commenting out those uh, offending bits, which will then result in uh, instantaneous speed up in their code. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a plan. I'd say it's a good one, but it's a yeah, plan. It's not a sustainable one for sure. Yeah. Uh, it might actually be a Dilbert comic for all I know. <laughs> it may be. <sighs> Dude said some questionable stuff. Uh huh. <laughs> Anywho, uh, I would like to say that when both Clyde and Terrell uh, say witchcraft, what they're referring to is what the Dene call anti, uh, something I can't find a translation for, but I found several sources um, that use the two interchangeably. So if we're talking uh, Gridman logic, anti is a uh, a kaiju that uh, was created by the by an individual because i feel like it's spoilers if i reveal that and um they turn into a big old kaiju and then they turn into a silver-haired boy with a scarf silver-haired boy with a scarf yeah and then he loses his eye at one point and then he becomes grid knight yeah and then there's a lot of scenes focusing on the bodies of high school students because it was written by trigger Uh uh-huh so Gridman's weird. Yeah, I don't think I've ever uh, uh, seen Gridman. Uh, so the old Gridman was actually originally Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad, and that okay. was all S's, by the way. Uh-huh. Uh huh. 
<laughs> and then, but that was a a dub with I think Matthew Broderick. No, not Matthew. No, Broderick. it was. Uh, it's actually someone who you recognize. Okay. Uh, the Matthew Broderick, Inspector Gadget. It's not Matthew Broderick. Uh, it's Matthew Lawrence. Matthew Lawrence. Okay. He was. Uh, he became. He was on. What y'all call it? Uh, I think Boy Meets World. Oh, oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I know exactly who you're talking about right now. Yeah, yeah. And he was also Mrs. Doubtfire. Okay. <laughs> well, that's wild. So yeah, one of the. Uh, one of the kids who is a part of the the superhuman samurai cyber squad. Yeah. Uh, his name is Troy Slayton. He's an American actor, practicing attorney, and TV legal analyst slash political pundit. <laughs> what a career! Like yeah. what what a uh, velocity that that individual has. Oh yeah. Like that was like the fourth to last thing he was on. Shoot. It was the last thing he was a main character on. And his name was, get ready for this. Yeah. Amp Ear. That's. <laughs> that was his name on the show. <laughs> that's a good name. This is a really good name. I'm not yeah. going to lie. And that's, that's, that's his first and last name. So his uh -huh. parents hated him. Oh, yeah. His parents absolutely hated him. They knew what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From yeah. here, I would like to say that um, they start to bridge into what I call modern skinwalkers, describing something called corpse poison, a pattern made of ground-up corpses of siblings um, and the literal transformation of people into werewolves. So we'll, 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 we'll hang on to all of that. We're, we're moving it to part two. We're okay. taking that section. Boom. Down there. Part two. Okay. Yep. Um, and I'm no... Uh, by no stretch, an anthropologist or anyone with a moderate amount of information on the Diné culture, but even the previously read statement of what they call witchcraft to me appears as some uh, information with a, a, a pretty heavy twist. You don't and say. By, I don't say. And by that, I mean it reads as someone who has observed rituals where there may have been dancing and singing around the dead or dying, uh, and the performer may also be the person who handles the dead after the ritual is completed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd also like to mention that all sources state that the Diné view these performers as evil, uh, but all of the sources are from the perspective of outsiders, or at least the sources I found, who I may believe may be assigning additional uh, beliefs, uh, because to them it's strange and involves the dead. I have no sources from within the culture uh, during the time frame that I'm dubbing traditional, in air quotes, uh, that flatly state these are evil people, uh, rather than rituals that are reserved for the dead or the dying. And the Dene people seem to hold this information pretty close, which is, to me, seems normal, uh, because it in does involve the dead in the afterlife, whether it be good, evil, or otherwise. Yeah, and let's let's also be real. The when we When we talk about translation of language as well and translation of intent it's not always the same because yeah. evil might be the best fitting word but evil might also not be an accurate description because when you and i imagine evil it's different than when someone else imagines evil from a different culture oh yeah when i imagine evil it's a lot like lending someone a penny and you never get it back well okay maybe we don't imagine evil the same way <laughs> but that's also because you and your pens and your your writing implements. Yeah, your your writing implements are a sacred space to you. They're 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 sacred artifacts. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different for you. Yeah, that <laughs> and uh, what else is evil? Uh, Canadian standoffs when you're trying to just get somewhere. That's when mm -hmm. there's a like a four way stop and everyone's waving the other person on. And you're like, come mm -hmm. on, man, just go. And the other thing is uh, when you're passing on the right. If the person who you're passing decides they actually want to take the next left. And you're like, come on. You, you don't. Because they're holding up. For those of you who are like, you never pass on the right. From where I live, everybody passes on the right because it's just manners. Even the cops will get annoyed if you're not passing on the right. It really is. Like, not even yeah. joking. If you don't pass on the right in New York State, you're the asshole. Yeah. 
At like, least you know, like upstate and the specific areas where we're at, you pass on the right. If you don't, you're holding up traffic and you're the jerk. Yeah. It's not the person turning left. Yeah. I'll tell you that much right now. And oh, yeah. on top of that, if you're turning left and you don't get as far to the left as possible. Oh, yeah. Ooh, as far to the left as possible without going into the next lane. That too. Yeah. Because yeah. that's annoying. That's oh, also man. evil. I don't know which is more evil. Yeah. To be totally honest. Yeah. I don't know if they're all bad, John. They're all bad. Also bad, the needing of needing to pee while uh, reading. I didn't insert a bathroom break spot in this one because it is a two-parter, so I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go pee. Today's episode is brought to you by Bathroom Breaks. We use the commercials to take bathroom breaks and make the segment separations seem more natural. They also help separate the tonal shift that usually occurs about halfway through the episode. Now back to the show. It's not that bad outside. No? I went to the bathroom and I, uh, I looked out the window. Just a light dusting so far, 621, so we'll, we'll see. We're right on the borderline. I was checking out Hudson Valley weather, and yeah. they said like 8 to 12 or, or up to 14 or whatever, but... It's not yeah. that bad. I think I'd have to pee less if I drank less, but I get raspy. That's fair. I also think that we're going to get hit by it overnight. I don't think it's going to happen during the day. Like today. Yeah. No, so. ditto. I'll, I'll be doing some night shoveling. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So, type two. Sorcery. The technique of sorcery is carried out through the casting of a spell on the intended victim. Because of the Navajo belief that a part of something stands for the whole, it is not necessary for the sorcerer to come in actual physical contact with his victim for the spell to be effective. Uh, it is required, however, that he use some part uh, that has at one time been in contact with the whole when reciting his spell. I have personally observed this very often in my work with Navajo students. Now, this again, this is a quote from uh, Terrell. Okay, so yep. that means... so. I haven't read ahead. I'm going to yeah. assume that, like, if they have hair clippings or toenail clippings or something like that, they destroyed them, so they couldn't be taken or something like that? Uh, I think it's more that someone has, or the student who is being counseled believes that someone got a hold of those okay. and caused something negative to happen to them. Okay. Yep. Uh, it is not at all uncommon for one of them to come to me and ask to go home for a sing because he feels that someone has possession of some hail or nail clippings belonging to him. Okay. Several times students have told me... Eh, closing the door. Several times students have told me that at night while sleeping they were awakened by someone pulling out their hair. In each case they were frightened and felt it would be used by a sorcerer to harm them. I've never encountered an instance where the person pulling out the hair was recognized, uh, whether or not the hair was actually pulled out. I cannot say with any surety, but I am certain that the students believe that it had happened and that their fears were real. I'll give him credit. Like, even in the 70s, he's like, hey, you know, I don't know exactly what happened, but eh, you know what? It was real to them, so hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, I'm giving this dude... This dude gets some major credit from me. He's, he seems pretty on the up and up so far. Oh, yeah. Well, that and serious respect for him. Again, he's going for a, a, a psychology major, and his master's thesis is him trying to understand the people who he counsels better. So that, that's just good on It's not just like a general psychology or one aspect of psychology. He's targeting a specific person or group yeah. of people. Yeah. I mean, that is that is actually a pretty important thing in psychology, too, because you do have to take on cultural... Uh, culture matters a lot to psychology, because... Oh, yeah. Like, someone who's religious, for example, if you phrase mm -hmm. something through a religious lens, they'll be more responsive to it. And oh, if yeah. they're not religious, then you have to phrase it through a different type of lens and stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, which is why, honestly, a big part of successful therapy is finding yeah. a therapist who clicks with you. Oh, yeah. Because that's just the way it works. Mm -hmm. it, it pretty much, the way you think it's supposed to work is the way that it works for you. 
and that's oh yeah that's not a joke that's like kind of accurate yeah um <clears throat> let's see e -e -e. okay um so charles comments don't surprise me as the use of other items uh, uh let me see the use of items either from or items that have been in contact with an individual have been used in rituals all over the world. Now, I'm, I'm including this part to try to put in perspective the um, this whole area of witchcraft um, to other people who might be looking at it going, oh, that's weird, or the, the use of stuff in, in spellcasting and that. Uh, many people will immediately think of Santeria and voodoo after hearing this, but I would like to point out that... <laughs> I like your shirt. Oh, thank you. <laughs> continue, continue. Okay. Uh, so many people will immediately think of Santeria or Voodoo after hearing these two descriptions, but I would like to point out that one of the world's largest religions, Catholicism, requires either artifacts that have been in contact with holy people or pieces of body parts of holy individuals, commonly known as saints, uh, to be sealed inside of an altar, and then the altar stone must be consecrated by high-ranking holy men before rituals may be performed. Fre frequently, these rituals take place in front of a wood or stone likeness of a corpse. They involve singing and sometimes dancing, as well as the consumption of human blood and flesh. Um, and again, I'm saying it that way to point out that what's going on above isn't really that weird or different from any of the more, mo uh, the air quotes, modern you know, uh, religions and, and cultures and that. So I want to just point out it is weird because I'm from the totally rational belief of allism. Uh huh. Allism, of course, is the uh, uh, deification of weird Alfred Yankovic. Okay. Um, in which we take our uh, autographed Weird Al copies and we place them in positions <laughs> of, honor, of honor. Um, so we may, so we may ourselves become. Just a little weirder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you uh, Did you see him on Hot Ones, the Chicken Wing uh, interview show? I haven't watched it yet, but I saw uh, it. It was good. They're doing Gordon Ramsay next. These wings are fucking disgusting. <laughs> what do I you made think a hot sauce doing? mistake. I, I'm still trying to perfect my falafel taco recipe, and really that's in the sauce. Yeah. And I tried to change adding a... A, a different hot sauce to what I usually use um, in it. Mm -hmm. And I switched from one that, was, that had a very high viscosity that had some maple syrup and some cayenne in it yeah. to a, a small X pepper sauce, which was very viscous, but I didn't check prior to trying to add it to the saucepan. Um, and I added, some would say, an unfortunate amount of habanero to it. Um, I only learned this after eating the tacos. Mm -hmm. I took one bite, but decided... I'm not doing dishes a second time, so I powered through it. <laughs> uh, an unfortunate uh -huh. amount of habanero. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that just it, reminded me. I regretted it. Yeah. I have I have some new ghost pepper hot sauce that I got from Lissa for Christmas that I needed yeah. to still. It's oh, like called what chupacabra or something. Oh, right on. Yeah, I gotta try that. Nice. Yeah. Type 3. Wizardry. Mm. The technique of wizardry is carried out through the magical shooting of evil in the form of some type of foreign object into the intended victim. Hmm. The, uh -huh. mm -hmm. These objects are commonly referred to as witch objects, and they may be a piece of bone, an arrow, a stone uh, that was burned and used uh, for a sweat bath, porcupine quills, etc., Hmm. Hmm. It's really just hmm. projectile-based okay. uh, version of uh, sorcery. So where uh, does parcel tongue about. fit into this? Parcel tongue. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. Are you? Do you have to be a descendant of a uh, he who must not be named? Or um, hmm. What about uh, what about owls? How do owls fit in? Quills. I mean, like feathers. You could a feather could could possibly work. Yeah, but I've never seen an I've never seen someone weaponize an owl quill. To I mean, be fair. <laughs> you I know if John Wick was written a hundred years ago and it was a play. <laughs> the worst thing is I was about to say 
John Wick is a fictional character. I was literally just about to make that joke. I would love I would love to see John Wick take place in a magical universe where it's like magic and it's like he once killed three men in a bar with a feather. A fucking feather. Uh, it, oh, so God. here's here's my question. Yeah. If uh if John Wick was uh-huh. in the magical universe of Harry Potter. He'd still use a gun, but continue. Okay. Well, no. If he was a wizard, right? He had magic <laughs> he would, powers. He would still use a gun. Well, but he's a combat <laughs> pragmatist, okay? So, like, yeah. would he use... Would he use, um... Uh, like, Avada Kedavra? Would he use that? Also. Also. Oh, exclusively. Yeah. How How screwed up is it? To wizards that like abracadabra is like <laughs> the, the, the crazy spell to use <laughs> like how messed up is that because like yeah. think about it think about it from the perspective of that universe's muggles uh-huh. right like i assume that they have abracadabra too right yeah it must be like every time they see that they're just like you f- monsters there is i f- I forget. It's an incredible, interesting etymology of abracadabra. I think mm-hmm. um, uh, Stephen Fry might have done a talk on it that's mm-hmm. very interesting. Um, I would like to say that a big part of John Wick, or at least what I find is the coolest part, is the offbeats. Because there'll mm-hmm. be, like, a cool... He's, like, super efficient killing people. Yeah. But then also, like, there's a scene that, like, in all the movies where he's just, like, casually... Not casually, but, like, they don't cut away from him reloading. He just actually reloads, and it's yeah. like a whole thing, and he does it in a super cool way. What's the wizard equivalent? Is that just, like, he, he quaffs a potion? In the Harry Potter universe? Well, hmm. You could ask J.K. Rowling, but she'll probably just rewrite a character as being some ethnicity or being gay. Okay. Because that's usually how her responses to those types of questions go. Yeah. Or, or here's the most fun one. Uh-huh. Uh, when asking about what, where the bath, what happened to the bathrooms mm-hmm. in the Wizarding World, she said that something was effect- to the effect of like they just disapparated their their poop. <laughs> like they just, they just, you know. Oh, I wish I could do that. They just like, well, no. Here's the thing. So it's like I, I read like a Tumblr post or something, and it's like a fourth year spell, yeah. right? So. There's, like, 13-year-olds walking around. They just stop in the middle of the hallway, drop trow, take a <laughs> massive steamer, and there must be just some dude walking around making their, their poop disappear. Like, that's oh, his man. job. I, yeah. I, I swear, like, the, the union for uh, poop disappears must have been uh-huh. furious. <laughs> When, uh, I like that it's a union. When modern bathrooms got installed in Hogwarts. Yeah. They were oh. mad. I don't know if I talked about this on the podcast yet. Oh. I know I talked to everyone about it. But yeah. the uh the, the bathroom crimes at uh-huh. work. Um I'll be super brief in case I did mention it before, but yeah. new guy at work takes crazy shits. Uh, I contacted a manager, manager contacted facilities manager. Now we have an automatic uh, scent sprayer in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So guess what was brought up in the safety meeting earlier in the week? The scent sprayer? It's not doing enough. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's very good. Um, Yeah. Also, I just want to point out, I'm uh-huh. not opposed to the fact that she's making characters gay or different ethnicities. I'm just more highlighting the fact that uh, J.K. Rowling has been kind of mucking about a little too much in her world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 looking for changes, and she she just does, like, the easy tweak instead of, like, you know, cutting into the real stuff. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. that's that's I was more making light of the fact that it's – she's she's going for the the easy buy-in not the more realistic one and like she doesn't stick to the gun so much um yeah like i have no problem with the changes i just feel like you should have made those changes the first time and made it apparent because it would have been interesting 
Um, but at the same time, like, I don't think that any chapters dedicated to uh, any character's sexuality would have mattered really that much, especially Dumbledore. Maybe if yeah. Harry was gay, that would be different. But anywho. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, I mean, I, with, yeah. With basically, this, around, yeah. This is a this is a, a CYA from John. I don't want to be <laughs> I don't want to be perceived of as uh, not being down with all that because I am. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. Everybody, you, know, you, me, the listeners, everybody. It's all peace and love, man. We all know what everyone's you know on about and all that. Everybody's show. We all know that. Yeah. If we're reading direct co- quotes or just talking yeah. about stuff and casual or anything slips out, it's all there, there's nothing's a bad intention. Everybody yeah. likes everybody. You know, yeah, there, there's n- nothing bad towards anyone except that one guy from the Ropen episode. Yeah, screw but that guy. Than, yeah, screw that screw that John. one guy. Outside of that one guy, it's all peace and love, man. Wait, wait, you know? wait. I do, I do have to call him out by name. Give me a second. I ought to make sure I remembered it correctly. Yeah, oh. screw Jonathan Whitcomb. Yeah, that's your Voldemort. <laughs> that's my Voldemort, Jonathan Whipcomb. Yeah, Except yeah. here's the thing, I'm not I'm not pretending his name is something that has power because in pretending that his name gives him power, that gives him more power. Oh yeah. Actually saying his name gives him less power. Yeah, like that one Family Guy episode where you say the uh, the guy's name backwards during game show time. Oh, Keepertzella. Then... <laughs> yeah, Keepertzella. Yeah. Keepertzella. Yeah. That's a cryptid we got to talk about. Oh, yeah, I think so. Okay, so yep. there's one more type. There is type four, frenzy. Mm-hmm. The technique of frenzy witchcraft, uh, a group of plants such as the Datura uh, mentioned is most often used. They may be administered to the victim uh, in cigarette by direct contact with the person by kissing in food, or by having the victim touch an object which has been in contact with the plant or plants. Let me just point out, that's a... Yeah. The kissing one, that's a play right there. Right? Oh, yeah. So, like, you take a you take a drag on a Datura cigarette, and you're just like, get over here. What? Kiss of death. <laughs> I saw... A, oh, no, they did this in a couple. I guess it's played out now, but it was cool the first two times I saw it. When there's the whole people do a play, someone puts on in the play poison on their mouth and kisses someone, but it's real poison, and they're all like, "I didn't know it was real poison." And you're like, "Of course you knew it was real poison." Yeah, yeah. yeah. In order for this technique to work, the plants have to be gathered in a prescribed way that resembles Navajo chant practice. It goes on much longer, but essentially. Um, it it just describes no, uh, plant medicine and poisons. It's normal plant medicine, normal plant poisons. Mm-hmm. Um, I did manage to find a story uh, describing a situation where a skinwalker was called upon, however. Um, okay. And this is... So we heard of the four different types of witchcraft mm-hmm. that the skinwalker uses. And this is um, an instance to put all of that stuff together in the context how it might be used. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, also, I couldn't find like the date that this happened. Um, yeah, that's that's not an uncommon thing with stuff like this. Okay, like yeah. I I I really did a, like I looked like I really tried hard to. I just couldn't find the exact like the day that this happened. Um, so note so, uh, a note on that. Yeah, uh, there was a there's a cryptid that I might still do an episode on in the future uh-huh. if I can find more details, but. Uh, I was doing research on it, and there was only a single article about the the cryptid. Uh huh. And I was looking for more facts, and like I couldn't even find evidence of this person outside of the mention of the cryptid. Oh and, man! And like I couldn't find any <laughs> dates or details about their uh-huh. their journey or anything like that. So I was just like, "All right, well, I guess this is an, a future episode or a, a bite because there's literally no meat on this bone." Yeah. Oh, yeah. And for whoever's listening, like, we, like, really look at the sources, if you can't tell, by, like, uh, at least for me in the Orient Pendic episode, looking at who owns the website and who purchased the company that previously owned the website. Yeah. Yeah. That, like, we care about dates and figuring all this stuff out, and whenever we say anything, whether it be, like, scholarly-esque, sort of like what we did before, or include um, intentionally crazy sounding stuff 
that's like we look at all of it and do it on purpose so that i couldn't find a date and that bothered me that's fair yeah, yeah. i understand yeah <laughs> Uh, but I will, I will say we intend, like, at least I will intentionally add um, the weird stuff. Like, I'll find a source and add the weird stuff. Everything's in the sources. So, like, there's real stuff and there's weird stuff. And both I add intentionally after looking at the sources. And I'll intentionally add some of the weird stuff from disreputable sources. Yeah. Um, well, cause... I'll, I'll comment on it. Or I won't comment on it if it's crazy enough, assuming that l- the listener will be able to tell. Yeah, I mean, it's fair, yeah. because the fact of the matter is, most of the stuff that we're dealing with is the crazy stuff. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's not a question of, we can't just sort through every, if we sort through everything, these podcast episodes would be a minute long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and for, for like, so for this one, well, for, for the part one and part two, I'm basically separating those two items to... Real stuff part one, crazy stuff part two. <laughs> I'm Just excited. Just because there's so much. I'm I can't wait to part stuff. two. Um, part two is a couple pages longer, four pages longer than part one. I'm surprised we made it this far, honestly. Yeah. Um, I'm so excited, though. I'm so excited. So part two, I'm super excited to read part one. I learned, it was just me learning stuff. And I was like, oh, man, I can't believe I we didn't know about that, like, yeah. If anybody so, has anything that they could use, like, give me context for more Skinwalker, uh, what my air quote traditional uh, Skinwalker stuff. Mm-hmm. That's super. Like, I find all the super interesting because I didn't know about uh, like the Night Witchcraft or or anything like that beforehand. Again, they call that it themselves. It they're like this is witchcraft. So like, ah, it was just interesting. Part yeah. two, I go into a little bit more historical events. And then bleed into the good stuff. No, not saying this is bad stuff, but if you could see my face right now, the good stuff. Like yeah. guy at a, like you're at a bar and someone's been there clearly since the morning, and they start talking to you type stuff, like that kind of good stuff. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, so okay, Skinwalker events. Quotes. Cree and Blackfoot Indians had gone to a fort in order to trade goods. Uh, staying in the encampments outside the fort, as the trading grew close, uh, there we there right? yeah right there right as trade as trading grew to a close, a Cree Indian shot a Blackfoot chief. The two musket bullets went through the center of his body. Oh, good. So a... they went clean. Yeah, clean. No, that's good. Right, well, good. I mean, shot. Well, I, there is probably lead at that point in time with the musket. They said yeah. musket. Yeah, but yeah. if it goes clear through, at least, you know, it's not stuck. Yeah, true. No, that, uh, that, that, yeah, that's right. I mean, he's probably uh, dead, but, you know. <laughs> there was a skirmish. The Cree fled, and the Blackfoot chief was lying on the ground in the agonies of death. The Blackfoot medicine man was called to perform a medicine or mystery ritual. Several hundred Native Americans and traders were assembled near and around the dying man. An announcement was made that the Skinwalker Medicine Man was coming. Spectators were required to form a circle around the dying man and leave a space 30 feet in diameter around the man uh, and free room for the Skinwalker to pass without touching anyone. Hmm. His arrival was announced and a deathly hush fell over the spectators. Nothing could be heard except the tinkling of the rattles on the Skinwalker's magical costume as he slowly moved through the avenue left for him. The Skinwalker medicine man uh, entered the ring uh, with his body in a crouching position, imitating the stride of a bear and making grunting and growling noises. Well, that's a powerful move right there. I'm just going to say. That's a power move. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's a power like a hush point. falls and then you just walk straight through and they'll go into your stuff. That's a power move. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I would also think it would be hilarious if he was bad at imitating a bear. <laughs> and he was just like <laughs> basically like a Frankenstein. That would have been so good. Oh, that would have been so good. <laughs> everyone and everyone's just in awe of the fact that he's like Everyone thinks that it's a great performance, but he's, like, yeah. doing it for a laugh. Uh-huh. And it's, like, totally on purpose <laughs> that he's doing it poorly. Oh, that's... that's Just, like... 
<laughs> there, there's like one dude who's just like, is is this for real, guys? What? Oh no, yeah. it's it's one real serious. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is real serious. Oh man, why does he have? Why does he have? Why is he? Why did he paint his face green? Put fake stitches on his face and you know put bolts in his neck. It, it's cool. Don't worry. Because <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, given the time frame that this takes place in, it's entirely yeah. possible that Frankenstein was a was a book. Because we don't know the exact True. date. Frankenstein could have been a book. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'll place this. It it reads like it, it was an account from the 1800s. Yeah. So I'll put it somewhere, kind of, sorta, in there. So Frankenstein could be in play. I'm just gonna put yeah. that out there. When was excuse the clickety clicks? Mary Shelley Frankenstein oh. published date. <sighs> 1818. 1818. No so shit. It's okay. in play. It's in play. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm Balls not on convinced. The field. Balls not, on the field. I'm not convinced that the Skinwalker wasn't imitating Frankenstein, and they just didn't know that it was Frankenstein. <laughs> and he's a. Here's the thing, skinwalkers, based on the description that you've told me, they're yeah. generally educated. At least, you know, culturally educated. They're, oh, yeah, cultural educated in medicine, yeah. 100%. Yeah, um, so <clears throat> they're they're definitely of an educated class of individual in the society. So, hey, who I knows? would love that he, one of them read Frankenstein, and they're like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to give this a try. I... I would love that. Although that being said, Frankenstein in the book was articulate. So, okay. Anywho. Yeah, closer to the young Frankenstein version. Yeah. Where he could perform putting on the Ritz. That's important. Yeah. All right. Like, are we are we sure if any of the Skinwalkers didn't perform putting on the Ritz now? Or were the dad from Everybody Loves Raymond? He the was d- Frankenstein in every, Young Frankenstein. Well, I'm pretty sure the dad from Everyone Lo- Loves Raymond is, in fact, a skinwalker. But oh, that's probably. A whole other, oh, that's a whole other human story. disguise. That yeah. makes sense now. The uh-huh. whole series makes sense now. Yep. Oh, man. Okay. It's all He's... a ritual just to make everyone yep. love Raymond. <laughs> Everybody loves Oh, uh, never mind. There's a joke I'm going to not share. Well, Raymond is not a likable person. On the show. No. In the context of the show, he's not a likable person. Oh, he's typing it. He's typing There's the joke. A, I can't say it. I can't say it. But, uh... Yeah, no, you're Is that changed. actually what it, it means? No, no, no. That's the joke I was going to say. I, oh. did, I was going to riff on that. And I was like, I can't. That's too... Yeah, I let's, can't. let's not riff on that one. I have to tell you, but I can't tell them. Sorry, <laughs> listener. Certain things can never be said. <laughs> yeah, no, that one's that one's a taboo. We'll call that we'll call that a, a an audible. Oh yeah, hundred percent. His body was entirely covered with the skin of a yellow bear. His own head was inside the head of the bear, which served as a mask. The huge claws of the bear dangled from wrists and ankles. In one hand, the skinwalker shook a frightful rattle, and in his other, he brandished his medicine spear or magic wand. He made a rattling and din uh, in discord and made wild, startling jumps and leaps. To this, the skinwalker adding appalling grunts, growls and snarls of the grizzly bear and made guttural incantations to the good and bad spirits on behalf of the dying man who was rolling and groaning on the ground as the dying man was moving around in agony the skinwalker was dancing around him jumping over him pawing and rolling him around in every direction this ritual continued for over half an hour when the man died the skinwalker uh, had returned his to his teepee and packed away his skinwalker regalia the medicine man was always paid for his ministries to the sick, and if the patient died, it was the will of the great spirit. If a person lived, the medicine man, Skinwalker, gained the estimation of the tribe and great celebrity. Oh. <sighs> yeah. So, some additional information that I feel is, is important for context uh, is that it's apparently taboo to wear the skins of animals other than sheep and buck. And the fact that the skinwalker wears the skins of other animals uh, may have added to how taboo they were um, and added to the lore 
that uh, surrounded them and that they could li literally turn into those animals or summon the powers of those animals uh, to aid in healing. So that's totally why... <clears throat> Uh, uh, so then my my character in Red Red Redemption is a total power play, is what you're telling me. Because I have the head of a bear that I wear oh, around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just I just wear that around. It's it's very fun because uh, everyone who's watching is just like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> like, everyone in the game is like, so that's a thing you're wearing. Yeah. And no, I'm it's just like, play. yes, this is They're my like, hat. You shouldn't do that, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I should. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's a power play. I, I tend to my my characters tend to be insane is a inaccurate word for them. Uh, normal I mean, based thinking... on the player, based on the player, that's not wrong. Based on the player, the player character is probably doing some pretty weird stuff. Yeah, no, that's listen. Sometimes. You just got to eat all those potato chips. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Or, or gather all of the, the turnips in Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so for e some uh, additional context on top of that, um, I found it incredibly hard to find any original sources, at least original written sources, and yeah. many that I did find seemed to contradict each other. Some said that the Skinwalker um, were pure evil and were by no means medicine men, while others painted them explicitly as medicine men and everywhere sort of in between. I, I found stuff. Um, I tried to sh show a bit of both sides uh, and a range from the different time periods uh, to try to give some additional context. And um, I, find, I find myself thinking of them sort of as medicine men who tend to deal more closely with death and use rituals that are taboo, you know, in, in normal society um, at that point in time. So they sort of a lore and superstition, superstition grew around them. So that, that's for my air quotes, traditional skinwalker. That's sort of where my head's at. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, it, it's kind of, um, it kind of reminds me of the uh, untouchable class a mm -hmm. little bit, but like in, um, in Indian culture, uh, where they have well, well, not Indian culture. I think it's in Hinduism. They have the untouched the caste system. Yeah. Um. So it kind of reminds me of like a weird combination of the untouchable class and the priest class. In a weird sense, mm -hmm. like it takes elements from both of them, like the handling of the dead, for example. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. Um. Because in a lot of cultures, for actually pretty decent reason, the handling of the dead is a taboo oh yeah no th no yeah there's a good reason why it's taboo yeah like it's a re legit reasonable thing especially when yeah. you don't fully have it especially when you don't have germ theory oh yeah so <laughs> um and you know you see time and time again that this type of individual will appear in cultures right yeah and like even even now, you can almost argue in modern society, the mortician and the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, what's the name? Mortician, the uh, dead guy dude. Yeah, the, the person who does the autopsies. I can't remember. Their name. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, shit. What? Uh, coroner? The coroner, yeah. They're not. Here? Yeah. They're not a, they're not ostracized they're not taboo but they're like the equivalent in our modern day and and honestly most people who i know yeah if you were to tell them that you were a coroner or you were a martician or you were interested in death uh-huh they'd probably be a little bit more leery of you so it's yeah. not it's not a i'd almost even argue that it's an evolutionary advantage to be suspicious of death yeah and people who handle death here's a fun fact and uh, something to think about when you start reading stuff about coroner says this and coroner says that. Mm -hmm. Coroner is an elected official. You don't have to have... Literally, there's no requirements to be a coroner outside of people voting for you. There's also no requirements to be the sheriff outside of people voting for you. Or to be a judge because people voted for you. Oh, or appointed you. Damn. 
So yeah. there's a lot of things in our society that you don't need qualifications to do. Yeah, problematic. Yeah. Like, there's a pretty high position that you don't need qualifications for. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I'll avoid talking about that on this podcast because that's <laughs> not the nature of this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And to say there's a reason that uh, barbers aren't elected. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. why they're surgeons instead. Yeah. <sighs> All right. So I guess we should do the plugs. Yeah. Um, so as always, uh, if you want to get in contact with us, we have our website, CryptopediaCast.com. Um, I think there's some stuff I'm planning on adding to that soon, but Ooh, you know, okay. Yeah. I, okay. I got some things I want to try out. Uh, yeah. we'll see if, if I ever get off my butt and do that. I've been playing around with a lot of stuff that make it a green text site, oh, like an early two thousands green text, black background. <laughs> You know, I could always add, like, a filter to that, like like a button that swaps out the styles and makes it look like yeah. that, which now that you've mentioned that, I might add that. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram, it's at CryptopediaCast. Uh, uh-huh. Usually we'll post episode-related stuff to that, um, and sometimes if I see something weird or Brandon sees something weird, we'll post it there. Yeah. Um, Twitter is at CryptopediaCast. If you want to email us, it's cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. All those uh-huh. links are on our website. Um, if you want to say. No, you <laughs> sure. go. Now you yeah, go. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, uh, in addition, holler at uh, Saturday Adventure for uh, we did. Oh, we just did a, you know, we got some of their, their adventure sticker kit. Set the, so sent some uh, uh, Cryptopedia stickers their way, and uh, I'm pretty sure that today is the uh, the day they release their Legends of Bigfoot series. Yeah. Um, so if y'all are interested in some of that stuff, go to uh, printisbetter.com slash Saturday Adventures. Well, uh, uh, I think we can add a link in the show notes for that. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'll, uh, I'll copy, scroll, 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 enter, paste. Done. Yeah. Yeah, we'll add a link in the show notes for you guys. Yeah, man. Um, it's, uh, yeah. They, they no, seem to, they, they do some pretty cool stuff, so. Yeah. Um, and we, I still have to figure out where I'm going to put my sticker. I got a Bigfoot sticker. Yeah. Yeah, I got, we got uh, some stickers I gave, my sister got one, let her choose one. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, she likes Bigfoot. That's true. She's I mean, a, the apple doesn't fall from the badass tree. She's a, she's a squatcher. She she's a squatcher. She's, she's a squatch head. So much, so many bugfoot patches on her jacket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen them. Oh yeah, uh, and for those of you who liked this, uh, we have a Patreon. You mm-hmm. could go on there, uh, check some stuff out. We've got a one dollar tier. Um, there's no bonuses. That's just a thank you for your support because we do buy books and and it costs money to host this. Yep, it's just a, a showing of appreciation. Two dollars, you get episode write-ups. For every episode, we do a full write-up of everything. We include pictures, we include links, we include some fun comments. I think in our Facebook group that we have, um, I give a little screenshot uh, from the Oring Pendic uh, episode show notes. That was fun. And yeah. for the Jackalopes, that's five dollars a month. You gain some bonus content uh, yeah. that at least I really enjoy. I don't know if they do, but I like it. Yeah, that's the next fun. one, I, I think. Probably by the time we release this, we'll probably have it up. Um, yeah, the, all the, the dookie. All the dookie was a very good, uh, a very my, good bonus episode. My lover's lane relationship advice, and uh, yeah, uh, we believe you also get a a, a shout out uh, during these reads. So shout out to Jackalope Clay and Claire uh, and yeah. all his poor life decisions. If you don't know what I'm talking about, listen to the previous uh, previous episodes. Yep. Uh, Clay and I don't see eye to eye, but I thank him for his money. <laughs> i don't know why this is continuing this is a horrible thing that's this is some horrible cryptopedia lore that's occurred listen i didn't go into it more i didn't the other episode i did my whole intro based on that this time i just sort of alluded to it yeah you added it in the part that people skip yeah yeah you added it to the part that people skip <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and Brandon mentioned the Facebook group. We've been getting more people on the Facebook group, 
And as a result, we've been getting active on the Facebook group because oh, yeah. I, I honestly don't like posting things to places and no one interacts with it because it just feels kind of sad. Long pause. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, we've put in a lot of stuff in there recently. Yeah. It's good. It's fun. There, there's uh, some hints for future episodes on there and stuff like that. I also put, we also will post to Twitter periodically, although um, I post to my personal Twitter a lot more than we post to the uh, the Cryptopedia Twitter, but we post there. Oh, yeah. Um, post to the personal Twitters. There's, uh, I think we also include like links to other fun cryptid related stuff yeah. on the Facebook all and also sort of just banter. It's, yeah. it's fun. Post some Bigfoot Tony videos. You posted the Wild Wild West video. <laughs> it's a good song. It's a good song. It also has something to do with my my episode that's coming up. Oh, um, okay. As always, rate, review, subscribe. It helps get us notoriety. Um, tell people about the podcast, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you have requests for monsters, request it. I actually think this episode was a request at some point. Oh, was it? Right I think on. so. Um if you have creepypasta or cryptopasta, send it my way. I do do cre- creepypasta reads for you guys. Um, although I haven't done one in a while, mainly because I haven't found a good one that I want to read yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Also, we got another review on iTunes. So at, you can be the next person to add the review. And, you know, just as a, just as a head, a nod to this person, uh, Possum Prince, I think. Is how it's pronounced. Opossum. It's not. Opossum. You, you don't. The the opossum is the O is silent, and so is the second though. P. Opossum. Um. Anywho, he says one of the best cryptid theme podcasts I've come across. Man. Thanks, but that makes me feel sad. <laughs> <laughs> Informative and fun research presented in a cryptid of the week format by two open-minded skeptics. Definitely worth a listen. Now I take offense. Yeah, I am closed minded. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you uh, for real. Yeah, um, that's uh, and I'd like to thank him for not putting uh, fun, informative, and research in quotes. Yeah, that's actually pretty fair because I would have put all three of those in quotes. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. In case you haven't noticed, we both may not value our own work. At all. <laughs> <laughs> but but if you do, we have a Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon, capital C, capital B. Uh, I have an Instagram at mu2057. My Twitter is at jfdunham website is still defunct after 19 episodes of this um my email is john at cryptopediacast.com i did actually so i i think it was like what last week i we talked about yeah. my my read the docs site uh-huh i think read the docs might have taken it down because they realized it was a read, like a, a a resume site uh, which is uh-huh. kind of funny to me but also kind of sad <laughs> um i might actually i gotta figure out i uh-huh. do so actually funny story because we talked about my master's thesis yeah uh there was a link to download the dot exe for that game oh is there yeah <laughs> and the best part is <laughs> it's a multiplayer first person shooter it doesn't have yeah. a lobby system but it does have like direct connects so uh-huh. if you wanted to you could actually just download it and multiple people could play across the internet <laughs> so it is technically possible to do you just need to know the ip address uh-huh. whether the game is good or not well um you know how i feel about my work <laughs> uh, but someone whose art we do like is tom hill who did our episode artwork you can find him on instagram at thomas michael hill his website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tom mike hill at gmail.com and if you liked that really good totally natural segue become a patron mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I, we've yeah. only said that 30 times this episode yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, also, I just realized, so uh-huh. I didn't realize this when we got Tom to do the the, the art. 
Yeah. Um, because you know we knew him in high school and all that stuff. So yeah, no, he's uh, a good guy. He's a friend. We hung out. Yeah, it's good yeah. stuff, man. Um, I didn't realize it, but he does a lot of stuff for All Things Comedy, which is the the Dollop Network. Oh yeah, no, a hundred percent. He he's yeah. like a real he's like a real dude. Yeah, he does well, a lot of stuff for a lot of like like Jim Gaffigan, yeah, Tom Segura, you know, all, all things comedy. Who who's um that's owned by Bill Burr. They they uh, the dollop Dave Anthony. Yeah, uh, like re- it's it's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I just wanted to I wanted to point out the fact that it's amazing that we got a real artist to do our logo. Yeah. And we don't think, acknowledge – we acknowledge him every week, but we don't acknowledge the fact that he's, like, a legitimate artist. Oh, yeah. Well, even in uh, when we were in school, he did um, he did a lot of, like, like CD-type uh, band cover stuff. And I had him do my thankfully dead MySpace had a some art by him as the user profile for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I guess it's time to close this episode out. Otherwise, we'll have 30 minutes of plugs. Um, oh yeah so as always i'm john i'm brandon and things are gonna get weird amp ear portrayed by troy slate the team's so-called space cadet and the band's bass player he became the band's bass player after revealing to the gang that his brother, who was originally intending to join them instead of Amp, was going to college. His intelligence was curious, as he was either clueless to his surrounding or displayed some unusual interact- intellect. He had an unorthodox way of performing tasks, such as writing in a notebook, using his toes, or studying by eating book pages with milk and sugar. To enter cyberspace, he always used a different phrase to be humorous. Amp's uniform consisted of a helicopter helmet and a leather jacket. It is later revealed that Amp is really an alien and returns to his own planet with his parents off screen. <sighs> the 90s were weird. What? Matthew Lawrence's character is even weirder. Sam Collins slash Servo, portrayed by Matthew Lawrence, the frontman and guitarist of his band, Team Samurai. What? He was always willing to help anyone in need. <laughs>